Always a pleasure being here, lovely people. Welcome to your most favorite show, PM Personality Profile. My guest tonight, he's a professor of crop science. He's a former bishop of the Kumasi Diocese of the Methodist Church, former chairman of the Council of Christian Service University College. He's a former dean of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. He's an inventor and a former assemblyman. Let's talk about the man, very reverend Professor Osei Safokantanka. Mm. Uh, the name suggests that you hail from the Ashanti region. Are yeah. you from where, to be precise? I'm from a little village uh, in the Asante Achem South District okay. called Krufa. I was born and I, I grew up at Krufa. Okay. Uh, it's Konongo, between Konongo and Agogo, that place there. Uh, and both parents are from there. That's why I'm trying to, because uh, lately we found out that my, my mother, my grandmother came from a village called Ekwekurum, which is close to Efijasi, Asante okay. Efijasi. Okay. So when he died, we went to, you know, the Asantes we are, we are concerned about. Yes, we had to go and bury her there. there. And my mother, when she died, also went and buried her, her there. there. So now I know that my mother's side comes from the Efijasi area, okay. and my father's side comes from, um, uh, what do you call it, Krufa or something. Okay. But that's where I always say I come from. Mm -hmm. And my name, let me mention this, uh, I am called Kwekusafo. Everybody knows that mm -hmm. in my village. Okay. And then uh, when I went to school, our, our class one, class two, the teacher was so good about religion. And I love the story of Joseph. Mm -hmm. So I was called Joseph. And my father is Ose Tutu, so my, my name was Joseph Ose Tutu. Okay. That's what I used until I got to uh, middle school form four. Uh -huh. And when I went to secondary school, and the African personality issues came <laughs> into, me, <laughs> into me, that is, uh, I wasn't a member of the Young Pioneers, but that was in Kroma's time. Okay. Uh, I was more concerned about being an African. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't want any foreign name. So I took away the Joseph. Mm -hmm. And I said, my father is Jose, and I am, I am Safo. So, mm -hmm. the, uh, Kantanka is an appellation. Mm. Every Safo is Kantanka. Okay. So I put the three together, <laughs> Jose, Safo, Kantanka. And so you, that is that is that is me. How you uh, came that by is, that. Uh, but I'm an, a typical Asante man. Asante man. Mm. Wow. So you were born in um, the Kruf, Krufa. The Krufa, and that's where you grew up. Exactly. How was growing up like in Kufa? Hmm. Yeah, that was those days where it wasn't very easy. Well, but I didn't know. I just simple boy living in my Kufa and going to school there. I was telling your cosmetology that I would tell a story. <laughs> I remember, I remember uh, my teacher, I was in form two. Mm. And then whenever we close, we will close in the morning, go and have our lunch and come back. And then he will ask us that he was going around to inspect our faces and our nails and give us marks. Okay. And then when you didn't, I didn't have the powder. So whenever we came back, you use chalk <laughs> and then you, you put it. <laughs> the powder in your face. You powder your so face. it will look so smooth. Exactly. Then you can and get then, marks. The, the teacher, he, he liked me because I was good and mm. uh, he had even asked me to come and sleep on his hall okay. in order to get the lantern to, okay, study. to study. So one day he came and he usually called me Nanetutu. Okay. So he came around and said, hmm, Nanetutu, when you power on your fair. And from that time on, he stopped I've using never the used uh, the, so <laughs> not only the chalk, but I've never bothered to so use uh, powder, on, powder on, 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 on my body at all <laughs> up to today. So when he was doing it, I said, I'll tell you a story. <laughs> no, but it tells you how I always say um, parents and teachers always influence. Have an their influence life. Yeah. on children. So he was somebody whom I trusted. And he has said that it's that all good it's true. for my faith. So forget it. You gave up. I, I gave up. <laughs> 
<laughs> but um, Krofa going to school, by God's grace, I think I was, I was good mm -hmm. uh, academically. Which school did you start from? I started from uh, Presby uh, Primary School. That's what we had there okay. to P6. And then uh, we had a middle school. Uh, it was, we were the second batch of the middle school. So I finished middle school in 1961. That's quite a long time ago. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I was the first people uh, to pass the middle school living certificate mm. with distinction. Wow. So the first uh, people in Krofa uh, to get a distinction. Wow. So it was good. The people and in the village will hail you. Well, maybe yes. But I'll tell you what happened with that. And then I passed a common entrance. Mm -hmm. And I was to go to Congo Dumasi, which used to be Asante Achim University, we call it. I passed, went to the interview and everything. And then my father said, no, he wouldn't take Allow care. Allow to go to school? No, not that he didn't have the money. He said he would not take care of me. Why? Be because the, the marriage between him and my mother had, was broken. My goodness, how does that, what has it got to do with it you? Hold, what has it got to do with <laughs> me? So whenever I'm in the pulpit and Father's Day, I talk to fathers about how you can really cause uh, this kind of mm -hmm. uh, damage. So uh, those that I had done better had all Dan. gone to school. And you were And home. I was sitting there because oh. my father Quite said he wouldn't. I stayed in the village, uh, in the house for two years. Oops. And thank God, I wasn't a bad boy. <laughs> 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 so I would go to the farm, get somebody's cocoa farm and go and weed, weed. and so on and so forth. And it took my head teacher and one or so for so far from it to really talk to my father. So after two years, he agreed. He agreed that okay. I should go, and then something again happened. Oh my goodness! <laughs> when everything had been prepared and I was going to go, I couldn't now go to Congo Dumasi because the time had passed. Hi. But my father wanted to arrange for me to go there. Okay. But my teacher had arranged for me to go to Christian Methodist mm -hmm. in, in Accra. Accra. Okay. So I was waiting, and I had written the exam for me to be able to go to training college. Mm -hmm. The results came. Actually, it was not my father who actually took care of me for my elementary education. Okay. The account people, they say, well, they took son. care of my elder brother, so Abusian should take care of me. You, so okay. it was my mother and my who uncle took care of you. who took care of me in the elementary school. Okay. And he wouldn't take care of me. But now that he had agreed, really. the results came and they told me, have passed, but they couldn't get the school that I had uh, wanted. I wanted. So I should go to Jaso, the district education office, and I'll be recruited as a, a, a people teacher. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was disappointed. That's unfair. And I, I look back and I thank God for that because I had the boldness to write a note and give it to the cuckoo cratchit there. Mm. to tell my father that if he will not take me to the secondary school, he should stop. Because I wasn't going to be a, a people teacher. teacher. Because I know that one day I will be a great man. I didn't know. What but I tell people saying? that I was prophesying unto You're myself. myself. Be, and, and, and somehow I believe the, 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 the prophecy has okay. been fulfilled. Definitely. Uh, and so uh, that, is, that is, so I started my secondary education in Accra. Okay, um, which Christian school? Methodist Secondary School. So you finally school. went to the I Christian went, Methodist yes, I and went your father there. took care of you? Yes, he took okay. care after uh, I wrote that letter to him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how was um, Christian Methodist? But even before that, um, yes, you've talked about the low moments in your village, but I'm sure there were also awesome moments, memorable that you you will never forget even at this no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a quiet boy just living man somewhere <laughs> in your corner you didn't like trouble no i didn't like but trouble. you had friends well i had friends a lot of them are gone now oh uh, 
but uh, what I clearly remember is that I always had to, something to do with my books and, and things like that. And you were studious. And I was, I was studious mm. and I still am. Okay. <laughs> so at, at Christian Methodist, was it different from the village? Definitely. No, no, I was now in Accra. Accra boy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I spent only one year there. Okay, because why? Because the, the second year, my father was able to arrange with some man that he knew. Okay. And so I came back to Congo. Congo, yes. Yes. Okay. And so I, I, second year on, I was at Congo Domasi. And how was Congo Domasi? Congo Domasi, I always tell uh, myself that it was the place of my self discovery. Okay. Because when I came to Congo Domasi, I was still doing very well academically. Mm. Uh, and then I got to SIS form. I passed very well, mm. uh, form, form five, went to SIS form. And there, I was elected a senior prefect. Okay. And around the same time, I went to a scripture union leadership conference. And there I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Okay. And so from that time on, my life became very purposeful. Okay. I still go back to Nehemiah chapter 5, verse 15, where he says, the governors who were before me really what, <laughs> did not allow the people to go. But as for me, I like it in Jesus. In Amidia, when you are in Kupo, Okay. And I saw the need, young, now born again Christian with my real principles. Mm -hmm. And that, by God's grace, has kept me there on. Was no I'm not saying I'm an angel, yes. but <laughs> at least it gave me a purpose in life mm. uh, at Congo Dumasi. I now got to know what God wants me to do. Okay. And until then, from there, I came to KNUST. At Congo Dumasi, what would you describe as your biggest challenge? Oh, my biggest challenge. Was, was that any time I tried to follow others, <laughs> I got into trouble. You land into trouble because you're not <laughs> so one So I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't like that. <laughs> and until later on when I became the, the, the senior prefect, and I was clear in my mind that I had to set. When, when I finished my term and they gave me a book and wrote, he has been a selfless leader. At that time, I didn't understand what they what meant. It was, okay. But on now, reflection, now I know okay. how, how they, even the teachers saw in mm, me okay. and the principles that I use in, mm. in leading uh, my fellow uh, mm. and serving them. Do, uh, do you remember any of the troubles that you got in trying to follow others? I, I don't remember. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't a bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then from Konongo, then, then from Konongo, I came to KNUST, University, University, to read agriculture. Mm. I always loved to read agriculture because that's what I had been exposed to. Yes, and from I, 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 yeah. You used uh, to go to the farm. Oh yes, when you were yes. Young, with your mom. Yes, and dad. Or yeah, mostly with my mom. Okay, but the two years before or a year before my father decided to sponsor me. Then I went to stay in, in my father's house. Okay. And then from there, uh, going to secondary school, I, mm. I was there. Mm. But uh, How was the journey in, in, in KNUST? It was good. Uh, we were not as many as they are today. Today. I stayed in Republic Hall. Mm -hmm. And uh, we enjoyed all. I remember coming here for the first time and being showed my room. Okay. And I said, wow, <laughs> I have a whole room to, to myself. myself. Is it me? Wow. The <laughs> village boy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I came here and uh, I, I think we, we worked hard. Uh, again, another significant thing which happened to me here was uh, I became the secretary to the Interhall Christian Fellowship. Okay. And at that time, it was not like today where we have all the denominations have come and uh, there's so much as you see outside. Mm. There it was, if you were talking about anybody who was Krife, then he was a member of the Interhall Christian Fellowship. Mm -hmm. And so through that, I learned how to stand before people to talk. talk. I was a secretary writing letters to invite speakers, mm -hmm. introducing them and all that. And I think it was quite a good experience for me whilst I was a student here. Mm. Uh, in addition to the 
uh, academic work which we were doing. So uh, the experiences were good. Um, vacation, training, um, I don't want to talk about the luxury that we enjoyed, the, the breakfast, you lunch, had six, uh, six meals a day uh, and dinner, and, and, and then even uh, 10 o'clock. In between exactly. snacks. I, 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 I don't you really enjoyed <laughs> uh, yourself. Yeah, so it, it, was, it, it was good. Mm -hmm. uh, during the vacation, they taught us how to drive the tractor. Mm -hmm. uh, then we, they took us around the whole country to look at the agric system mm -hmm. as it operated uh, mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm. So the course was good. I pity the, the young people who are in <laughs> they there. Didn't now. No, they didn't enjoy that. They, 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 they don't enjoy these kinds of things. And, and then you became dean of students. Yeah. Um, I, I, when I finished, you finished, I got a scholarship okay. from, from the university. Mm. The, I got it, a uh, CEDA scholarship okay. through the university mm. to go and study and do my master's and PhD okay. in Canada. Mm -hmm. So I went and uh, studied agriculture for my master's and my PhD. Mm -hmm. Again, there was this challenge. When I finished my PhD, that was the time Ghana was really in turmoil. Mm. That was 1980 yeah. and the Rollins Coup 1979 and the killing of the, the and exactly okay. and all those things had happened. Mm -hmm. The question was, a lot of us went abroad to study. Okay. The question was, I remember one member of the IACF who was also in Toronto. He called me and said, "Or say, you think it is God's will that you should go back to Ghana at this time?" Mm -hmm. I said, "But what is wrong? God has opened the door. It's I've got country. a scholarship. I've gone to study." Why shouldn't I go back, back home. to home? It was, it was, coming back wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. But I thank God that I came back mm -hmm. uh, and uh, went through all the difficulties and, and, and things like that. And I keep on, when I'm preaching, I keep on saying that I don't think anyone who stayed back, who got a scholarship, went and stayed back, has been able to really made in a serious contribution or more than I have been able to, particularly yeah. amongst my own people, yes. coming back from 1980 to, to serve uh, and teach mm -hmm. and, and do research and so on. And doing research, that takes me on to some of the awards that I remember uh, the, this um, Farmers Day, mm -hmm. they always give an award for the best agricultural researcher award. Okay. When I came, uh, I was doing my research series. It wasn't easy. The place that I was doing my research now is a hostel. Mm -hmm. And um, I was working. And the dean had noticed me, one okay. Mr., the late Mr. Zantiquetia. Mm -hmm. So when they asked that you should nominate one of uh, the lecturers to receive the best agricultural researcher award, mm -hmm. he nominated me. I didn't even know. Oh, I got a letter that I should go to Nyangpala. Uh, the Farmer's Day and receive an award. Okay. By God's grace, I received the second one uh, when I developed the, the, the varieties mm. and so on. Mm. So uh, it was a lot of hard work, but I was determined uh, to, to go through it and produce uh, results. So when you came back from, I mean, you had a scholarship, you studied abroad, you came back, you came straight to Ken USC yes, to work yes, here. Yes. Okay. Because so they, gave, they gave me the scholarship to go, so okay, I came back. You came yeah. back. Aside being dean of students, what did your work here entail? Well, it was entailed teaching and then also doing research. Okay. Uh, it was later on that when I became associate professor that I was appointed the dean of, of students. Okay. But before then, all I had to do was to do my research and uh, it gave opportunities to travel for, to conferences and so on and so forth. So we, we, we went through that. Uh, and that's where uh, these varieties that I developed mm -hmm. also, also came, came on board. Okay. The tech banshee is, is in, in the genus, is, is the first uh, cassava mutant okay. to be developed. Mutant means that uh, we use uh, radiation. We went to Kwabenya mm. to, to use radiation to radiate cassava cuttings okay. and come and grow them, have all kinds of mutations taking place mm -hmm. and select.
Mm. So uh, it, it was quite an interesting piece of, of research okay. that I did. And so what, what I was able to do, we call it tech bunch. My focus was on uh, changing the cooking quality of that cassava. Okay. It was a high yielding cassava we got from RITA. Mm. And yet we couldn't cook it for our fufu. Okay. And I had to do the radiation mm -hmm. uh, with re research support from the International Atomic Energy Agency. Mm. And then uh, we were able to come up with that kind of research. The tech banching. Tech banching. And the tech centrum. Yeah. And then I also, under the root and tuber improvement program, mm. I also did research and released two varieties of cassava, mm -hmm. which we called IFAD. IFAD, International Fund for Agricultural Development. They supported uh, me financially, okay. uh, the uh, active financial, and then we also called one in Kaboom, because okay. this was the first time a university lecturer was working together with the Minister of uh, Agriculture, the Crop Services Department, Department. Uh, to to they they facilitated my testing of my materials across the country. Mm. So we called the variety in Kabum, mm. and the other one was Ifad, and this one was Tech Banchi, and mm. the sweet potato was uh, Tech Santum. Mm. So these were research uh, accomplishments uh, that, that I made. But let me say this. Um, when, and that's one basic problem we have. Okay. When it came to getting my, applying for promotion to full professorship, mm -hmm. I ran into problems. Oh, really? Because the university failed to recognize the varieties that I had released, which were available for farmers to produce. produce. The University Appointments Committee was telling me, go and write papers, go and write papers. That's what it doesn't, wanted. It, it doesn't mean I had written papers. And yet... But they this was even an they, addition to yeah, the papers. Yeah, and they did not even take those things that I had done for any assessment at all. They looked at my papers and concluded that I, I didn't qualify to be promoted to full professor. professor. I remember at uh, uh, academic board meeting, it was a fight because all the lectures were angry. Everybody knew that South African Tanka has been doing a lot of this work. work uh, and so I went to Columbia, Seattle, and I was given a standing ovation for wow. the work that I had done, done. on cassava. And, your and own yet country? my own people are saying that. And I think the problem is still around. Okay. Because they... they Sometimes they look at the papers that you have written and they say, oh, you haven't written into international journal. Look at somebody doing research on cassava and looking at cooking quality, fufu quality. Mm -hmm. And you write for Bruni to really assess your paper. He said, what, really what is fufu? fufu yeah. fufu uh, 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 so, any day. Any he doesn't word. understand exactly. it. And yet, your people will say you are, you, you, <laughs> <laughs> you should have published in, in those kinds of... And, uh, so I, I think that we need to come back to the relevance of what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, I've written about a, a bit of that in, in my book uh, because if that attitude towards what is ours and how we can improve our own mm. is not going... To, I don't think that a professor here should necessarily be compared to a professor in America. The, no. Because the problems they are solving there is not the same as what I'm solving here. Definitely. Uh, when I came, I saw this uh, uh, thing there is what? Uh, fiber and things that somebody has got patenting and things like that. And it's good. A great achievement. Mm -hmm. I just read it. Mm -hmm. But you see, these things are for the international people and they are using the technology and everything. Whilst we still wallow in, <laughs> in what? Still weeding and bending with and things like that, with cutlasses and so on. Age. And so I think uh, the time has come mm -hmm. where our intellectuals should begin to see how relevant they are to the problems that confront us. Would you say that your exceptional performance in your career after school was uh, made possible because of the training that you had from KNUSD? I would say yes. Uh, you see, when you really come to my being or suffer, I haven't gone to any uh, the theological institution. Okay. 
is being a member of the Scripture Union, being a member of IACF, mm -hmm. reading my Bible, and so on and so forth. And of course, having a critical mind mm -hmm. because of my background as a scientist mm -hmm. and so on. And also being able, I read a lot. Okay. I read a lot. That is all it has taken me to even become a bishop. Okay. And nobody can, by God's grace, be able to say that this man is deficient uh, in terms of what he gets up to to, 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 to preach or to say and things like that. Mm -hmm. So being a scientist and then also going into the ministry, mm -hmm. I became a minister in 1988. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was here in 1980, so you can see that. Uh, so, and when, when I came here, and when I became a minister, I told the Lord, I don't want to use the fact that I'm a minister as an excuse for non-performance. Definitely. So whatever anybody is able to accomplish, I will also want to accomplish it and still be able to do the, the work, work of, of God. God. And I, I, so when I finished that and I got to the full professor, I said, it's finished. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything more to do at, uh, as an academic. Let me now go uh, to, to the church. And there, the challenge is, is, is greater. Enormous. And more, we'll, we'll, more, more, We'll talk more. about that, <laughs> but looking back yeah. as a student of KNUSD, coming back to work, research, teach, become dean of students, mm. what's your assessment of the university now, now compared to the time you left? The university has really developed what? Leaves and bounds. Uh, sometimes I drive around. The other time I went to this place and the buildings and all the infrastructure and then, then the sheer number of students that they... When I, I was the first dean of students and uh, that was when the non-residence mm -hmm. thing began. began. And I had to take care of students and... I, now when you go to IHRC, it's not a typical university village. Okay. So things have really changed. changed. The university is now a lovely place. Mm. At so our time, it was lovely, but now... now <laughs> just that they are not getting uh, the six meals a day. No, 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 no. <laughs> now, uh, and I think we cannot continue to do that. Definitely. We I cannot mean, continue. Population is growing. Yeah. Uh, so we need to make sure that people... Pay, pay. That, that's one thing. Let me say this. I... I like uh, the, the free SHS very much because my experience tallies with it. Exactly. If it has not been somebody, I would have... Went to bed on exactly. your behalf. So the idea of free SHS is good. Okay. But we also must let parents take some responsibility. responsibility. Mm -hmm. Because going to give them even dress and, and shoes everything. and everything is that the dependency syndrome is being deepened and yeah. we must move away from, from that. that. But this university has, has grown leaps and bounds mm. and we thank God for that. Okay. But I think that the challenge that the university faces is even greater than uh, during uh, uh, yeah, than our time. See, we are churning out thousands and thousands of students. Yeah. But the university's work is not just to give people degrees and let them go out. Mm -hmm. They carry the label of the university. Mm -hmm. And what they do, what they perform, is a reflection of what they got at the university. Yes. And I think that I've been thinking about it. I've been talking to the authorities and I've written about that in my book, that we need to not just take them through the academic issues without seriously making them aware of the country from which they come from, mm -hmm. of the continent of which they belong. Yeah. And they should, really, the system should be such that, look, when we were students, sixth form, we did uh, African uh, study, uh, it is a general paper. Yeah. You had to pass it before you could go to university. When we came to KNUSC, we did African studies. Yeah. All of these things are gone. Mm -hmm. So you are just, it's a factory. You are just turning Producing these people them. out without seriously Monitoring. making them relevant to the issues of their day. Yeah. I took one student, not from UST, to a, uh, someone who wants to start a cassava starch factory mm -hmm. at, 
And uh, he said he had done a Greek engineering. Okay. I took him round that we wanted to employ him. After we've gone round all over the place, he came back and said, Now my office is here. <laughs> he wants an office. He wants an office. And <laughs> a Greek engineer. I'm showing him, him the, the, show him the field. He wants an <laughs> office. You see. So that is that is that is a kind of thing. You see, we used to uh, as a nation, we used to prepare manpower to take over from the Abrofo. That mm -hmm. was what Nkrumah was. Uh, uh, they, they were doing. But now that is not the challenge. Yes. The challenge is to make our young people aware of the situation we face. Mm -hmm. Let them go down to the, to the, to the, uh, the, the, the grassroots and begin to... There are a lot of them who don't even know what it takes to produce uh, rice. Oh, yes. Or what it takes to, to get an egg. Mm -hmm. And yet they have done agriculture and got their degrees mm -hmm. and they have gone away mm -hmm. with it. Definitely. So we, we cannot do that. If you look at our system also, we have changed the agriculture, uh, the, the educational system. I, was, I have done the arithmetic. We have changed it in such a way that uh, by the time somebody finishes university, he's about 22, 23 years. Our time, if you went through the mill, by the time you finish, you were 27, 28 years. We've taken away five years. Mm -hmm. So we are putting these students out into the field by five years. And yet, mm -hmm. we haven't expanded the economy, we haven't done anything to absorb them. And they are coming into a Ghana where they don't seem to really know the realities of the day. Mm. And I, I, don't, I think the universities must accept that it is their responsibility not only to give students degrees, not only to tell them about entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. they let them do entrepreneurship, but what is the reality on the ground? And it is the reality on the ground that will tell you what you can be an entrepreneur to solve the problem. Definitely. So we are not, we, even though the universities have expanded, the students are coming out, they are bright. Mm -hmm. We used to do seven years of secondary school before we came I'm to the sure. university. And they are doing hard. Three years. Three years. Yeah. And they are coming and they are passing with first class and all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But they are unaware. The quality. I can see that all my, my desires and all that I have done is simply because I am aware of the situation on the ground. Mm. If you go to Krofa now, when I became the, the bishop, I said, no. I know the situation I went through. Let's, I went to tell the Methodist here, let's start a secondary school here. Mm -hmm. And now there's a secondary school there. Wow. So we, they are, the universities are churning out students. And I think that the time has come. Mm -hmm. This morning I was thinking, they finish four years and they go and do national service, which means virtually nothing. nothing. Why can't we have a system where the five years, including the national service, mm -hmm. will be part of the university system yes. and at least give them one year to go out and be acquainted with the problems that we have before they come to do their final year and get their certificates? Absolutely. I mean, the time has come for what? Rethinking. The vice chancellor's mantra, and I like that, mm. he says, the gown must go to the market. Definitely. It must go to the market. It must go to it the market. It must not stay in the offices. No. <laughs> the reality is how do you really get the gown to, to go the to market. the market? Yes. That is, I think, the challenge that is facing the vice chancellor and her team. Mm. And the, uh, they, they should work on that. The, the university is 70 years old. What's your message to the university? Yeah, that is, that, I think the message is what I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. It's not the, only the, 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 the challenge of bringing out students that have been trained to be relevant to the, the problems of mm. their country, mm. but also need lecturers that are also what? relevant to the problems of our country. Mm -hmm. When we were in uh, secondary school and universities, we, I remember Legon Observer mm -hmm. was a journal that Legon lecturers were producing. Okay. Why should UTAC always be talking about we want an increase in our salaries? Mm -hmm. This is a collection of the highest brains in the country. Yeah. And they should really be come out with, with solutions. Our political scientists in the university should not only be conducting 
polls to show which party will win mm -hmm. and which party should lose. Yeah. They should be able to talk about some of the things I'm raising here. That's a it. system that doesn't that seem to be working. Mm -hmm. And I think they should provide that kind of leadership. Mm -hmm. If the academic community is not providing that kind of leadership, and also tell my, my people in the church, we're also not providing that kind of leadership. And we're all closing our eyes and folding Hold our hands, hands and looking up to the people in parliament and <laughs> the people who say they want to do politics. Our country is doomed. Ooh, so sure. I wish uh, KNUSC uh, the best of, I wouldn't say luck, the best of God's grace mm -hmm. in, in the years ahead. Mm -hmm. But my key message is you have done so well. You have trained some of, of us. And uh, we thank God for the various places where we are contributing to the life of our country. But they are kind of dorsal. They are kind of dorsal. Yes. Very Reverend Professor Osei Safo Kantanka. He's my guest tonight. And we've really been having um, deep conversations about how we can fix our country. When I return from this break, remember Prof is a man of many hearts academic, clergy, all the other things he's been doing. Plus, he'll be telling us about his family life and lifestyle. Stay with me, I'm coming right back. Hey, welcome back to PM Personality Profile. My guest is very Reverend Professor Osei Safokantanka. He is a professor of crop science. He's an author, he's an inventor. He's doing so many things. Professor, at what point did you get the calling to really go into, I remember you said you gave yourself to Christ mm -hmm. um, at Konongo, mm -hmm. but at what point did you feel the need that you really had to do God's work? Yeah, uh, when you are a Methodist minister and uh, you go for an interview, they always ask you this question. How did you get your call? Mm -hmm. uh, I was asked the same question. But I, I told them, look, I, I looked at the gifts that I have. When I came back from uh, Abruchi, I was worshiping at uh, Amakum Calvary Methodist. And uh, I was appointed a leader. And uh, I was given a class. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I, I, God has gifted me is to teach. Okay. I like to teach. Mm -hmm. Even when I was a student, if the, the teacher comes to teach us anything and I, I'm able to gather my, my colleagues around mm -hmm. and explain things to them, then I'm finished. Okay. It means I have really understood. Suit. And yes. so if you come to my service, my preaching and everything is teaching. Okay. And so I was there in the church and I assessed the gifts that I have. And I said, but if I can teach and the people really can benefit from it, what prevents me from exercising this gift? Mm -hmm. Because if I'm a sofu, then it means that I can do this, uh, I, the pulpit is, is virtually uh, yours. So I assess the gifts that God has given me and I concluded that with my understanding and so on, I could become a sofu. Mm -hmm. And so I offered myself, and interestingly, uh, they put me into a program with a called Theological Education by Extension. That's when they have started it. Okay. Which means that when they go on vacation at Trinity, mm. then we will go there for two weeks. Okay. And so on. So we went the first year. And then at the end of the first year, they gave a report to the Methodist Conference. Mm. And the report on me was that, this man has enough knowledge to be given the color to become a sofa. Wow. So he does not need to continue coming. Wow. And so after, <laughs> after. And that was it. That was it. Goodness. If there's anything training that I have had is I spent some 10 weeks in London, John Stott, London uh, Institute for Contemporary Christianity. Mm -hmm. And I've also gone to Haggai Institute mm -hmm. for advanced leadership. Leadership. After the advanced leadership thing, when I went there, it really stimulated me. Wow. Because I came to appreciate that everything is about leadership. Okay. And immediately I came, I set up what I call Africa Leadership Development Center. Okay. So that we could focus the Bible leading us to. Mm. So that is, mm. and so all my, whatever I have done, 
it's not really, if you want, the typical mm. uh, or kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, and as I said, I'm studious. I, I read a lot. A lot. And uh, by God's grace, I believe the Holy Spirit gives me the understanding. For whatever you for, read. For whatever. I'm like, I think somehow, uh, I follow the steps of, of Paul. Okay. I, I'm a tent minister. Okay. It means that I wasn't receiving salaries from the church. Okay. And I was in charge of a Ija church there where a lot of the lecturers go. Mm. And I had to give messages that challenge them to commit mm. themselves to Christ. So but I always tell some young people, being a worker, and not suffer at the same time. Mm. It's a lot of work. It's not easy. It's a lot of work. Because the suffer work alone demands devotion. Yes. All your time. Yes. Now you're blending with other, and academics also needs your full attention. So they, 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 I tell them, they say Mondays are holidays or for our suffer because they've worked over the weekend. But I finish my uh, suffer Juma at Bethel and on Monday, I'm in the classroom with my colleagues. Teaching. So when I became a bishop, some of them were surprised. Friday, Mondays are supposed to be rest day, but you see the bishop in the office in working. The office working. So uh, hard work, a lot of, uh, yeah, it, it's been my hallmark. I mm. have to work hard, mm. and I do. And, and as bishop of the uh, Kumasi Diocese of yes. the Methodist Church, yes. how was the experience? I mean, yeah, it was it was it was great. I uh, I think during my time, uh, people really got to to know. We went to Abertia. I was leading. Uh, I wrote a book, uh, the anointing that breaks the yoke. Mm. Uh, a, a, a lot of things, and one of the things that I did at that time, which I'm continuing, okay. is that I began a, a radio and television broadcast. Mm. Mm -hmm. We we were on uh, uh, GTV. We call it Hasem Padero. Okay. So every Sunday we had a whole crew like you have. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we would take my message mm. and then, and because I love to, to preach in Chi. Okay. Because my concern is that my people down there must hear yes. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So even now, I love to really give my messages in Chi. In and I know a lot of our people understand Chi. So the Hasem Padero thing went all over the country mm -hmm. and people were, were, were listening. Even now, uh, I'm working with uh, other broadcasting thing, and the, the people are listening. Prof, uh, congratulations. Thank I must you. say that we are very proud of you. Keep up with the good job. Which among the kids mm -hmm. who I'm sure are also proud of you mm -hmm. are following your steps as academic, clergyman, inventor, let me thank God for my wife. See, I always look back. I don't know what stuff I'm made of, but I told God that because of my background and where you have led me, mm -hmm. I want to marry from my village and raise children there and demonstrate to the people that when you take God and you live that way, you'll be able to raise children mm -hmm. who will just be above what I, I used to be. Yeah. So my wife comes from uh, my village. He didn't at that time had major educational background like okay. that, like I, I had. But okay. I took her to Canada. Uh, we struggled there, and uh, we are okay. We have five kids. Wow! Uh, they have all gone through the universities. How many males? How many females? Uh, three males and two females. Okay. There's only one whom we gave birth to in Canada. He's gone back. Okay. With, the, with the family. That's why I'm not too happy with the Ghana <laughs> situation. I don't really love my children to... to, Be to yeah, because I, 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 I think we can do it here. Yeah. But they have gone. The eldest son is also uh, struggling in America. Mm. Uh, there's one who is in Accra. He, he did graphic design. He has set up his own company, uh, what, Flow, Flow Multimedia. Is doing very well. Okay. Another one is also struggling in Accra. But there's one here mm. who is now doing her PhD. Okay. And it looks like She's he is one. a more of an <laughs> academic that has okay. uh, her husband is also has a PhD and uh, he will be I think in the next year or so he will be completing her PhD mm -hmm. doing climate change and gender challenges and things mm -hmm. like that. He did mm -hmm. 
uh, land planning and so on. Okay. So I hope and pray that if nothing at all, uh, she will be able to, to take up the mantle and do some of the things that his father, uh, her father did. I'm just happy that they, they've taken the Lord and they are serious with their, okay. uh, some of them, uh, maybe I might say, none of them now even go to the Methodist Church. Okay, they and go I'm not, to their own church. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. It's the same God. Yeah, I, I, what I'm concerned is that they should know the Lord and should live uh, their lives. And, and if at some point any of them wants to uh, be a pastor. You see, this organization, Bishop Kantanka Teaching Ministry, mm -hmm. I am even planning to set up what I called Institute for Leadership and Reformational Studies. Okay. Because I see that if we don't get the young people to begin to think about Africa, they need to change their mindset and so on, and mm -hmm. we just continue like this. Mm -hmm. And the Lord has laid it on my heart. Mm -hmm. Safo, the kinds of things you are talking about will not come within just a short time. Yeah. And the universities are not even seeing what we are talking about. <laughs> so I am setting up this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that through it, uh, they can, uh, even if they don't become a sofa, they can hold on to what uh, I'm starting. Mm -hmm. And there will be an institution that is training people on leadership that is relevant to the needs of our country and our continent. Absolutely. And if I'm able, that is able to happen, I will be happy in my grave. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you uh, for the you good work much. you're thank doing. You do you do any sporting activity? Not much. Not much. I yes. go to the farm. These days I don't. Okay. I, I'm a good, I could really weed. Okay. Uh, yeah, and do a lot of but I realize that uh, age, old age is catching, catching on me <laughs> and I don't need to do all those. But in my, in my background, backyard, I weed. My okay. garden, I take the cutlass and mm. I weed. Mm. Uh, what I do is go for a walk. This morning, for example, I did more than one hour of walk and, okay. and came back. And mm. So I'm aware of the need to keep my, my body, uh, in, in, uh, take care of it. Uh, but I'm not the sports type. type. I understand. I know Walking alone is enough. Yeah. It's a lot of exercise. Yeah. But I'm, I'm sure you listen to music as well. I mean, as a preacher, as a teacher. Sometimes when I'm preaching, I use uh, some of these uh, contemporary, and sometimes people are surprised. <laughs> That's I the only also, way you can I get their attention. I also preach a lot and use and produce songs. Okay. Because the songs that I'm producing and the others made, they reflect the thinking of our people. People. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the thinking of always thinking that it is somebody who is doing something. Yeah. Perhaps people must begin to really think and solve our own problem. problems. So I use a lot. And when I, I, I come to the young people, I, I, I also uh, bring in uh, some of re, the last one I was in. Is what? Signed, sealed, delivered, I'm yours. <laughs> it's, a, it's, <laughs> it's a song, and, okay. uh, some, and uh, so uh, I, I listen to I listen to the music. Really? I once once uh, they are they are good. Uh, I listen. You listen. Do you have a favorite? A, a favorite song. Yes, uh, I see a favorite song. My daughter sings a lot. Okay. My two daughters they do very well. Oh. Uh, but when the song I haven't really. My focus had been on and produce songs, okay. but these days I also listen to a lot of uh, religious songs, songs like this lady, uh, what is her name, the one who won, uh, Dinah. Dinah Hamilton. Yeah, and those ones, I okay. listen. Which, which of her songs do you really like? I think the last one which is so popular. Uh, is it Adum? Uh -huh. Adum. I think you have interviewed her, haven't you? Yes, I yes, have. Yes. <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've watched this. Uh, so you sing, you sing a bit for me. I don't, why don't? <laughs> I've been through a lot, but grace sustained me. It actually tells your story. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. It's now a well, we're having a testimony, yeah. I don't 
Adam, what the for of sing for me? <laughs> My liar in the I used to sing well, but these days. It was you, my soul's on the battlefield. So the essence of my praise is centered on your grace. Adam, Adam, you see, what the I think about this interview whole thing and I said it's all by grace. I'm not the only one who has gone through the university. Definitely. And the university is not interviewing everybody. Everybody. So sometimes I sit back and I ask myself, why me? Why me? And why, how did I qualify to be called to be interviewed? The other time when the vice chancellor herself came to my house, that you are some of the people we must really come and congratulate for your contribution. I said, wow. when I got there, I said, hey, vice chancellor, buy me fee. <laughs> why not me coming to her office? Office. I was really, uh, yeah, and, I'm, and, and I think that's what she is saying in her song. It was Paul who said, I've done more than all the others who came before me, but yeah. not I, okay. but the grace. Right, Reverend mm. Professor Osei Safo Kantanka. I'm really grateful I'm that you very, opened very up grateful. to us. We appreciate you. Keep up the good work and may God bless you. Viewers, thank you so much for watching. Same time next week, we'll be bringing you another captivating edition of PM Personality Profile. My beautiful dress was made by Max Legend. Call them or WhatsApp them on 0241410223 or visit their showroom at the exhibition roundabout Dan Soman. And my makeup products are supplied by Ultimate Glamour. Visit them on the Legon campus or call them on 0506012627. Many thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of our programs.